Recognize. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I come here for two purposes. One is to express my opposition to this bill. My second purpose is to express my hope, my hope that we can come together and that we can negotiate a long-lasting and a significant compromise, an American compromise to an American problem. Just yesterday, the Democrats in the Senate blocked Senator Tim Scott's bill, the Justice Act. They blocked it from moving forward with debate. They blocked it from moving forward for compromise and for negotiation. That's not an American solution. We all agree this is an American problem. We all agree we need an American solution, and we all agree that that means we've got to have negotiation. That means that we've got to have compromise. The minority leader in the Senate wouldn't even allow our counterparts in the Senate to discuss solutions and allow them to decide if it's the right path forward. Now, here we find ourselves in the House, facing a situation where we have a partisan bill drafted without Republican involvement that's being brought to the House floor to be voted on in a rush process. That's not an American solution to an American problem. We've seen calls to defund the police and dismantle police departments across the United States. We all know that can only lead to bad in outcomes. We all know that the police are there to protect and to serve. Yes, we all know that there are bad policemen out there. We all know there are bad actors in every profession, and we know that they need to be weeded out. We need to do that. And we also know that those bad policemen are as offensive to the good policemen as they are to anyone. No one wants to see them weeded out more than the good policemen want to see them weeded out. This bill does nothing to address those calls and reassure Americans that things will happen. No, this is a partisan bill with no Republican involvement whatsoever. This bill also doesn't take appropriate steps to ensure that law enforcement officers are working to improve their relations with the community, the community that they serve and protect. We've all said, we've all said, we need community policing. You ask any policeman, any good policeman out there, what's the best police practice? And they'll tell you community policing. That's what we need. Instead, this bill limits their ability to do their jobs and keep them, it keeps them in their cars rather than interacting with the people in their communities. That's what they want to do. They, they're not there for the money, we know that. There's not a single police person out there that's there for the money. They're there to protect and to serve. And they want community policing. That's what they want. Mr. Speaker, in my district, we had a tragic death of a young man whose life ended way too early, Ahmaud Arbery. This was something that none of us should accept in our society, and none of us will accept in our society. It should have never happened. We've had protests as we should have protests. I'm very proud of the 1st Congressional District because our protests have been productive. Yes, we should protest, and yes, we are protesting. And we're getting results because we're protesting in the right way. We're protesting to change the system. That's what we want to do. We're protesting to have an American solution to an American problem. The right path forward, Mr. Speaker, is discussion and negotiation with our eyes, with our goal, with our mission set on real reforms. This bill doesn't have that. This bill doesn't represent that. This bill is not an American solution to an American problem. That's why I'm urging my colleagues to oppose this bill. That's why I'm urging my colleagues to negotiate, to compromise. That's why I'm encouraging my colleagues to come up with an American solution to an American problem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back.